works right. We'll get a big pour in here, hopefully. Uh, I'm sure there's one coming in. There's got to be. This thing's been going for a couple of weeks now. Saw about 40 pigs on the way in, so they're moving around. Uh, the feeder's set to go off around 7. We're here at 6, so hopefully it uh, it goes off like it's supposed to. It hasn't given me any problems yet. We are hunting with something different. I've been working on. I don't know if you guys can see it. I got a compound bow here. It's an obsession. Uh, the bow. That's not really what I'm excited about. I'm excited about these arrows. So I spent a lot of time uh, tuning these arrows uh, to make a. This is going to be a 600. 70 grain shaft. It's got a 250 grain single bevel cutthroat broadhead and it's just razor sharp. You can shape. You can see right here. I don't know if you can see that. That's my hair coming off. That's how sharp that thing is. So it's like it's super sharp but it's got a 100 grain press insert. The shafts are 29 and a half inches long. They're fledged with these uh these little blazers, but they're feathers. I fledged them myself. There's four of them, and then a lighted knock. But the finished arrow ray weight is around 670 grains. That's going to be almost 25 percent for the center. Uh, they fly like darts, man. I spent a lot of time. Tuning these, I got all my stuff off of uh, Ranch Ferry. If you check him out on YouTube, he's got some amazing content. He'll show you how to make a real arrow for these big pigs. So, we're on a little test run here. Hopefully I can run this thing through one.
I screwed up on that shot, as you guys can see. That was a that was a terrible shot, but uh, a lot of stuff. I a little bit of learning deal on this. Uh, I've shot trad bows for a while now. It's been you know a good while, and long time since I shot a compound one. When, when I got all this uh, the bow set up, uh, I put a lighted sight, and I didn't take into account how bad that was gonna. Like with a trad bow, you don't have anything like that. And when you're looking through a peep, even if it's a big peep, and you have that lighted sight, sometimes it's a little bit too much. So I was getting real halo-y uh, stuff through the sight. I finally thought I had him good. He was, he was right there, and he went to turn. I was going to try to shoot him hard quarter and away, so I would drive that arrow up through the, uh, through the front of him. And he was in the middle of turning right when I shot. You can see right before the deal. And I really couldn't see that when I had the peep up there. So, ended up with a Texas heart shot, which is not good on a big pig like that. It's worked out for me in the past, but it didn't work out this time. So there's the arrow. You can see the blood goes all the way up to right in here and right past. Here's a full length arrow to show you the penetration that we got. So, it's broke off. That's probably... I brought my tape out here to measure it for you guys. And get it up there. It at least got in him 8 inches. I'm thinking it got between 12 and 13 inches. You can see on the tape right there where the blood goes to, where it broke off. So, probably 12 to 13 inches of penetration, which is pretty darn good considering it went through the ham probably hit the bone or pelvis or the backbone I'm not sure it was a pretty loud whop when it hit him and he took off he ran back to the left and then he cut back to the right making all kinds of noise I could hear him thrashing around a couple of hundred yards away I thought it was a long ways away and making all kinds of noise and when I went to trail him he was dumping some pretty good blood followed him all the way to the fence and he went under uh, on a place that I don't have permission to go into so I couldn't go after him but uh, I learned some stuff on this whole deal uh, especially now that I've switched over to a compound I need to even uh, this is a spot hog and it's got a little uh, a pin light here and even at the lowest setting it's too much like out here on the target it wasn't bad but on a dark night like or actually it wasn't even dark all the way last night it was just haloing really bad and I couldn't see that that pig had turned just ever so much and I thought I was on and I wasn't plus I did shoot a little bit to the right anyway so all that equaled up to a ham shot and a pig that's gone that I couldn't retrieve but as far as penetration amazing that it got as much penetration as it did and I'm sure that pig's dead I'm sure he's dead right over the fence where I couldn't go over there I wish I could have went over there and got him but I there's no way I could have contacted the owners last I don't even know who owns the place to be honest but lessons learned at least we got it on film this time so we'll keep trying uh, it was fun as you can see a whole big herd of them came in and I had saw a bunch of pigs that day, so I knew they were going to be moving around. So I waited. I knew there was probably a boar over there because I could hear more pigs. And sure enough, after a while, he came in. You can see him come in from left to right in the frame. Um, I'll be working on this. I'm going to get the thing fixed. And uh, sorry for the bad shot, guys. I, you know, uh, I'm sick about it. But we need to get rid of some pigs, and I'm pretty sure that one's done. So. Anyway, see you in the next one. Killer B out.